My name is uh, Charles Ellen, and uh, I uh, practice in Roanoke, Virginia, uh, podiatry section chief at uh, HCA Lisgale Hospital and uh, Carilion Roanoke Memorial <coughs> Hospital, and uh, also CEO of the Professional Education and Research Institute, uh, which worked as the CRO for uh, Geislick Dermaguide and their Advanced Wound Matrix uh, Pilot Study. A little bit very quickly on Geislick. Geislick is a Swiss a company with a long Swiss tradition. It's family owned and its founding was back in 1851. It has a very strong leadership and has a commitment uh, to all of the industries that it has gone into, um, including now into wound healing. It has a partnership uh, with three medical and research educational foundations, and it's a trusted clinical solution. Uh, they say that every 15 seconds, a Geislick product is used somewhere in the world. So what is Dermaguide? Uh, Dermaguide is a bilayer matrix. It has an excellent absorptive capacity. It's very easy to trim, so prior, even prior to hydrating, it cuts very nicely, and it can be sized exactly uh, for the wound. Once it's applied, it naturally adheres to the wound, um, and it will actually absorb quite a bit of fluid, actually nine to 10 times uh, its weight in fluid um, as it nicely adheres and conforms to the wound, and it's ready to use uh, in a small box and sterile, so it can be peel packed and used, and most importantly, unlike a lot of the live tissues, if the patient doesn't show up, it can stay right in there for when that, that diabetic patient eventually uh, follows up into your clinic. The mode of action of the Dermaguide, it modulates MMP activity, it maintains growth factors, and it's an optimal structure for cell migration and attachment. It's my honor uh, to present a pilot a study that was conducted by the Professional Education and Research Institute. Our principal investigator, uh, Professor David Armstrong from USC, uh, Keck School of Medicine and Salsa, uh, was our principal investigator as well as our a validation team of Dr. Dennis Orgel from Harvard, Rob Galliano from Northwestern, Paul Glatt uh, from Drexel, and Jared Kaufman, uh, Professor Marissa Carter, our statistician, and myself. It was WIRB approved, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about the study. It was a 10-patient trial, 10 consecutive diabetic foot wounds, non-healing for at least four weeks. Both Wagner 1 and 2 uh, were allowed to be in the trial and they received weekly applications of the Dermaguide uh, in the Wound Healing Center. All the wounds were evaluated weekly for up to 12 weeks, and the average wound size was actually quite large. Um, most of the patients were elderly, 65 years old. Uh, most were morbidly obese uh, with the BMI of greater than 34, and the average wound size was twice that of the standard DFU. It was 3.3 centimeters squared. At the conclusion of the study, it was found that 9 out of 10 patients healed, 90% healed, and the average time to closure was actually extremely fast. It was 2.7 weeks, um, which is extraordinarily fast uh, for a diabetic foot ulcer non-healing, and there were no serious adverse events related to graft treatment. I'll go through a quick, some of the cases with you, because the most important thing to see is where the Dermaguide was actually applied um, and how impressive it was in some of the deeper wounds. Uh, this is an 80-year-old uh, policeman uh, with a long-standing wound under his fifth metatarsal. You can see that with the initial application, you can see how the Dermaguide will actually absorb and the fluid of the wound will actually allow it to contour directly onto the wound site. After one application, you can see the fresh skin along the very corner uh, of the wound. It had healed about a third. After the second application, the wound had healed uh, close to 70 to 80%, followed by the third application, a little bit of improvement, you know, almost almost home. And then with the fourth application, uh, the wound had more or less healed and uh, remained healed uh, at five weeks. The second case, and this is an interesting one, you look at it and it doesn't seem like a very large wound, but we all know as wound providers, a wound on the plantar aspect of the foot with the diabetic patient only has three toes at the plantar crease, that is not an easy wound to heal. It's also not an easy wound to graft. You need a material that will actually contour nicely to the wound site. And again, this shows you that once the, the Dermaguide is actually hydrated with saline in the patient's own blood, it nicely contours to the plantar aspect of the wound. And very quickly with week one, the application with week two, and then after week three, uh, the wound was completely healed 
and it remains healed at good durable wound healing at validation. The next patient, uh, this is a relatively easier wound to heal, a dorsal wound, but what was most impressive with this wound, this patient was on Plavix and aspirin. And you can see in this instance, the fluid that went into the wound was the patient's own blood. Um, the blood that went into the wound after appropriate debridement, um, the dermaguide was able to absorb all the blood, and after one graft, um, it had completely healed um, over the dorsal aspect of the uh, toe, and it remained healed at the validation. The next wound, this is the wound that failed. And I don't think a good investigator is a good investigator unless he shows you the wounds that actually failed. And in this instance, uh, with the first application, uh, the patient, this was actually an, an attorney, a very non-compliant attorney with a client of CMA ulcer, uh, but the first wound had healed by about 20%. The second application, about another 10 or 20%. With the third application, it had improved nearly 60%. After the fourth application, you'll see as we move forward, you can also see his nice uh, attorney sweater in the background. <laughs> and uh, with the fifth application, um, the wound continued to heal. And uh, the sixth application, we're almost down to just a speck. It's uh, over 90% healed at this point. But unfortunately, if we look back, we see how well it did. But then non-compliance came into place, which always happens with our diabetics. So to report fairly, fast forwarding the 14 weeks, he remained unhealed. Uh, he wasn't as compliant as he should have with his visits and his bandages. And unfortunately, we were not able to get him healed with the derma guide, despite getting him to near 90% closure. As we move forward, this was one of our worst wounds, a deep Wagner II. You could almost palpate down the bone at the base of the wound. You could see how nice the derma guide contoured. And very quickly, after one week, it reduced by about 50%. After the second application, it reduced to about 60%. With the third application, it reduced about 80%. Fourth application, um, it reduced uh, near to almost complete closure, and uh, you can see that it remained healed um, at our validation. Another wound, you can see by the dress of this patient, a nurse, um, on her feet eight hours a day, a Wagner II down the capsule. Um, you can see with the initial application, she healed over the capsule, followed by the next application, um, she healed by about 50%. And followed by the third application, she was nearly healed. And then the final application, uh, she was completely healed on the plantar aspect of the foot. Our very last case uh, was an older patient. He was in his 80s. He had a large bunion, neuropathic diabetic, um, with a neuro neuropathic ulcer uh, from his diabetic shoes. You can see with the initial application, he had to feel eyes nicely. About 60% of the wound had healed. With the second application, um, he went on to almost complete healing. Um, and then after week three, uh, the patient was completely healed by week four. Um, so just in summary, in our initial pilot examination, 90% of the wounds completely healed. It was a very low cost of closure. I know it's not essentially appropriate in a pilot to report cost of closure, but if this is any indication of future clinical trials, the cost of closure was only $1,200 uh, for these wounds, which is an incredibly low cost of closure for a graft um, being used for healing in diabetic foot wounds. Other important features uh, that differentiates the derma guide is ease of handling and its ability to absorb fluid within it. So when you apply it, the wound's fluid or the blood will actually be absorbed into the graft and the graft will stay there quite nicely and in place. So it's very easy to use uh, and very easy uh, to adhere to the diabetic foot wounds. So stay tuned uh, for future clinical science on this, as Geislick is committed uh, to clinical science um, and uh, clinical trials, uh, which you will see at SAWC Spring. So I say thank you very much.